Okay, it's Lucy and Lenny talking about in Unit 16 the two forms that are at the end. It's on pages 471 and 472. So the first is the adjective pollus, which means in the singular, much, and in the plural, many. Those, I think, it's a, it was a surprise to me when I realized that they were the same word in English, but. There you go. That they they don't look related even. <laughs> so they come from different roots, the singular and the plural. All kinds of weird things happen in language. But what happens in Greek is not as weird as much and many. Okay, what what's happening is that this adjective polus, um, except for the four forms that are in blue in turquoise, beautiful turquoise blue that Belize use, um, is just like agathos. Okay, the adject the forms that are in yellow have a circumflex on and a genitive and a dative and acute on the noun or the accusative, but are just like agathos. The four forms that you can think of them as at the corners of the paradigm are archaic. Okay, there's they're third declension forms that don't have a thematic vowel, the eta or the omicron, um, and that just have the stem polu, which you see in polyvalent and poly you know, polyana no, not polyana. <laughs> <laughs> poly polymorphous and all those sorts of words, that's the suffix in English, the, 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 the U becomes a Y, um, that, that's the root, okay, and then you have the endings of the nominative and accusative singular for third declension nouns, which are S and N respectively, and then the plural, no ending, just the U. Okay, so other than, uh, uh, this is an adjective of a very, there are a large type of common adjectives that are exactly like this. They become renewed. Originally, all the forms were third declension, but they become renewed in the language. Um, so they become like agathos, except in these four forms, which are obviously places that are used more commonly, and so the old forms hung on. Um, so, you know, after a while, you do get balos in the nominative. <laughs> Okay, in Greek, but these are just archaic forms. Um, and we're going to see the next word that we have that's like this is the word for big, another really common adjective. And it has the archaic forms and the nominative uh, singular masculine, the nominative sing accusative singular masculine, and the nominative and accusative neuter, and everything else is like agathos. Okay, so uh, it's, it's an example of a type. And, and it's a good one to learn. The plural forms are all like agathos and based on the stem with the two lambdas, not the one. Okay. All right. So the ex next thing we want to look at, and the last thing in this lesson, is the word for ship. Now it's going to get nautical and nausea and all those things. Um, it, it's it's a very old word. The 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 our book tells you something that I think is confusing. Um, it's it only has one stem that is nu eta and then either a u or the letter that looks like a dub, an f with a long stem which is called a digamma it's like one gamma superimposed on another okay that's why it's double gamma okay but it's the way in which uh, in greek dialects that had this sound um, the sound of a W was written. So you know that in English pronunciation, and uh, those of you who know there, know there are languages like Latin, for example, U and W are the same, are even written as the same letter. In ancient Greek, when there was a W, it was written as a different letter from the sound of the U, the vowel, okay? Mm -hmm. W is what's called a semi-vowel, like Y in English. Yes, okay? So in any case, what happens with this word is when the ending begins with a vowel, um, the, you, you have the digamma, the W. When the ending begins with a consonant, for example, the nominative is an S, the, you get a U. So neus, um, nominative singular, but ne was, uh, genitive singular. Now what's happen, what happens in Attic Greek anyway is that the W disappeared, so it became neos, and then and this is the thing that happened everywhere you had that combination of an eta in one syllable and an omicron in the next. You get in what's called qualitative and quantitative metathesis. The long vowel becomes a short vowel, so the eta becomes an epsilon, and the omicron becomes a long vowel. The short vowel becomes a long one, okay? Um, so they, 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 get, they get flipped, okay? Um, and so that's why you have neos. Notice that the accent pattern here which is that you have an accent on the first syllable um, in the nominative <coughs> and the accusative and in the vocative, and an accent on the second syllable 
in the genitive and the dative is what we've seen before for uh, third declension nouns of the type nux, nux, nuctas, nucte, nucta, right? The accent stays on the first syllable of the non recusative but shifts to the second. That's an archaic accent pattern. So, um, so there are two things that give you the genitive. In the case of the dative, you can see that the only thing that's happened is the, the, because you have the ending with the IRE, you have the W, and it disappeared in Attic, so you get ne I. In the accusative, you have the same phenomenon as the nominative, the eta upsilon. And eta upsilon, that combination of an eta and an upsilon, got simplified almost everywhere in Greek to an alpha upsilon. Some books print eta upsilons in them, but manuscripts, in most cases, have variation when that's the case. So sometimes you see neus, sometimes you see naus. But in, for example, in the manuscripts of Homer, you have neus with an eta. Okay. Um, the, the, the vocative is the form without any ending now from neu, okay? And if we look at the plural, we can see the same thing happening. That is, neus is from original neus. The ending begins with a vowel, so you had a w and a w disappeared, so you get neus. Um, if you, if you look at neon, it's that you have the flipping going on, okay? Neon, the eta became an epsilon. And he, in this case, the omega stayed because you can't have a genitive plural in Greek that's not an omega. Um, so it's by analogy to all the other genitive plurals. And now si, you have neu si. Okay, the ending begins with a consonant, so the u is there. And the eta and the upsilon became an alpha upsilon. In the accusative plural, ne as, the book gives you naus as a standard form, but but that's a, a secondary and a late form. Most, most classical Greek and Older Greek have ne as, which is from ne was. Naus is by analogy to the nominative form. It's a, it's a very, it's not easy to account for, but the regular form is ne as. Okay.